Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you to Study IQ in this daily Hindu analysis videos. These videos they come in the morning and in the evening the PIP videos they come and both in Hindi and English and the PDFs you will get on the Telegram channel of uh, Study IQ and the Facebook group of mine which uh, where I also upload these PDFs daily and today is 30th of January this month is about to end and we would start with the motivational quote never give up on what you really want to do. The person with big dreams is more powerful than the one with all the facts. You see, the problem of the life is that there is more struggle and less achievement. So most of the times you are struggling in the life and that's uh, uh, these all situations, they give you uh, negative experiences and stressful experiences. So we become over practical sometimes and we become uh, negative also sometimes. So that drains our energy. Okay. And you see, you may say any kind of uh, uh, definition is there for the truth that uh, life is going to end someday. So there are various interpretations of life and its truth. But the biggest thing is that you have to fool yourself sometimes so that you remain energetic and positive about life. All everybody knows that life is going to end one day. But you still be positive every day. You go with the motivation, you go with the energy. So you fool yourself. And how do you fool yourself that what is the best way? Best way is the dreaming. And dreaming gives you the positive energy. Always look towards your dreams. Whenever you feel stressed, whenever you feel negative, always look towards your dreams. They will uh, pull you towards uh, them and they will give you positive energy. And you see the person who is a dreamer, is always always more energetic than a practical person and that extra energy that is actually the emotional energy okay and that will take you towards your success because you will need enormous amount of energy so that's the meaning of this line and it's a very very practical line for all of you so that's why they say never give up always think why you started and keep going on that path but go with the energy and energy will be uh, given to you by your dreams so with the big dreams is more powerful than the one with all the facts so always remaining practical is not gonna help sometimes so be energetic thanks a lot next these are the numbers there you can call and uh, ask for these study iq pen drive courses these are covering important static portion whether you are preparing for upsc ssc rbi any examination these are going to be very very helpful sit at your home and study nicely these are some words that i found today and now the editorials the most important article today is think universal basic capital we all are discussing the universal basic income the funda where the situation with india is like india is growing quite well everyone accepts that recently we became second biggest producer surpassing japan in the steel manufacturing and you see uh, we have surpassed many many countries uh, for, uh, for the nominal GDP numbers and all and uh, from the PPP uh, 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 context we are the third largest economy in the world so things are so positive and here in India uh, many billionaires are living and who are coming on the top list of the billionaires of the world now see alongside these facts the fact remains that India is also housing biggest number of poor people and these numbers are higher than the sub-saharan countries which are always given an, as an example of the poor nations so we are worse than that in some measures and you see we know all these facts regarding the biggest number of blind people and uh, the divyangs okay and the poor people who are dying because of hunger because of uh, poverty because of uh, non-possession of any kind of land or any kind of uh, thing of life so these are negative uh, situations with india you must say okay these are negative evaluating measures so somebody should not die out of hunger and this should be the bottom line okay and uh, it doesn't matter they are living their uh, life in luxury or not and there are too much uh, happiness is there or not but at least anybody should not die out of hunger and they should not do uh, any kind of suicides or any kind of extreme steps they should not take and they should not die on the road out of hunger and poverty so for that uh, problem the universal basic income is the solution 
that you give a, a, a particular amount to whole population so that people are not dying like this so that's the solution to the india's poverty situation but you see is it a viable idea is it a working idea is it gonna work for long term these are the troubles because see if we go by the logic if all people are given a particular amount then what is the meaning the situation remains same we should target poor people but always it's a big problem political and economical also that whom we should target and there are going to be political pressures and uh, economic pressures always and policy failures happen because of this selection so at that front we don't have to select anybody we will give this income universally that's good and that may uh, address some issues of uh, 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 dying out of hunger that may address that but still for the long term it is not a working idea so we need to see some straight points here which are being put up in this article you see benefit of india's economic growth must trickle down and it is not going uh, down that's why people are dying otherwise this situation should not happen where uh, the big number of billionaires are living in india and people are living out of hunger in the vicinity on the road so this trickle down impact is somewhere problematic whether it's a problem of system or it's a problem of corruption with or it's a problem of some uh, economic uh, management of the country so that's the trouble and you see these groups like poorer farmers landless rural laborers and millions of workers these are at maximum trouble okay so we need to think about them now you see some solutions for these issues the writer is offering here that whether we consider that there is no problem economy should go like this and all the pressures will balance themselves and uh, anyhow they would adjust so there is no problem we should understand like this so that's the solution but it may be a soothing idea for the rich class otherwise for the poor it's a totally negative approach so it's wrong privatization it can be an idea you see even ronald reagan uh, the uh, usc's president former president he said that government is not a solution government is a problem actually so private sector can give some help here you see the issues of corruption the issues of management the issues of output and the issues of efficiency they are good with private sector okay so private sector is working nice there but the main problem is private sector is not structurally manufactured to tackle the issues of social security and the social issues like health education and other uh, uh, different social responsibilities so they are never going to take talk about these th issues and they are not going to take uh, this responsibilities if some things are not mandatorily put on them the way we put csr corporate social responsibility so it's a mandatory condition on these corporates otherwise they are only going to talk about the profit they are only going to take care of the profit and that's why milton friedman that person says that business is business and it should go like business and it's always uh, running on profit and it cannot uh, subsidize the citizens it cannot give any kind of relief for the citizens and it cannot take the responsibility of social sector business is business okay so that's the trouble with business and it is always uh, concerning about the profit so we cannot leave these responsibility on the private sector so here also there are problems now the issue of universal basic income it can address some issues but ground still to be covered what is that statistically poverty has reduced a lot in india you see they are always in this uh, uh, particular way of system that they always want to prove by numbers that, uh, that the poverty is uh, not rising and we are covering the poverty issue uh, and it's a lot of uh, achievement and the improvement in the area of uh, poverty and the numbers are coming down heavily so this is the uh, try that statisticians are always doing out of political instructions so even economists admit these are the situation but a lot more need to be done and need to improve the education and we need to improve the healthcare sector these are the basic social sectors and our life is dependent on these you see if healthcare is totally privatized then certainly many people would die and the situation we see today if you suppose government hospitals are not there then certainly many of these people would die because they won't be able to afford it 
and if education is not free in the uh, government schools then certainly 90% of the students who are uh, learning in the government schools they won't study because they could not afford it that would be the situation so we have to leave these issues on the state that's the advice here and state has to take the responsibility here the other issue of efficiency and all these corruptions and all that should be taken care of and we need uh, better management there we need political will there and we need a robust administrative structure but these responsibilities should be there with the state and you see prioritization of public uh, services is not going to help okay as i told you milton freedom said business is business okay and uh, there are conflicting views and that's a practical uh, observation also that private sector does not care much about the social sector these are rich people always taking care about their own survival because competition is tough so th that's the thing now disruption and the basic income you see structural forces within the global economy have been driving down wages and creating insecure employment as i have discussed earlier also the issue of uh, artificial intelligence machine learning robotics and all these things the big companies like amazon facebook uh, and uh, uh, these uh, big tech giants okay they are investing heavily blindly in these sectors because they know what kind of world it would be after 10 20 30 years and the uh, around some uh, data more than 75 percent of wealth would be lying with these one percent people so you can suppose what kind of inequality is going to surface in the world we have seen the situation in india and we are seeing the situation in india and now the official data are also open that 50 percent wealth is lying with the one percent of indians so that's the trouble now in this situation these tech giants they only are pushing this universal basic income because whom they are going to sell their products they will be manufacturing everything with the 3d printing and with these uh, um, uh, these uh, robots and all and they won't need any uh, employ uh, these employees okay so everything would be beneficial for them but only when they are they are going to sell these products these manufactured items but whom they are going to sell if people will not have any money in their pocket then who is going to buy them so it's a beneficial idea for these tech giants only that's why they are pushing this universal basic income okay but you see this is also not going to help because if we are going to give this money to uh, uh, to whole population then certainly the benefit would be cancelled out okay that may be a situation that uh, some people are out of uh, uh, these uh, conditions like death by hunger but situations in the long term will uh, will go towards a worse condition okay now see in this inequality uh, inequality uh, situation when some symptoms are like that this inequality will certainly rise this uh, industrial revolution 4.0 which is totally based on artificial intelligence and this digitization so it is also uh, showing us that employment would be lesser and lesser okay so this universal basic income has appeared as a silver bullet solution but it is not a perfect solution that's the writer is saying here you see the beauty of the universal basic income we can accept that it avoids messy political question about who deserves assistance because they are going to give it to everybody so there would not be any selection and there would not be oh, no, no, any kind of problem of jealousy by some people that we are not included and those are included and those are given the basic income so they these kind of troubles would not be there but in the long term this policy would fail you see how these people are going to buy these affordable education and affordable quality healthcare services because out of this basic income they won't be able to buy anything more than their bread that's the reality because basic income how much we can provide it was discussed that around 1100 1200 rupees uh, government may uh, give as a universal basic income to indians but this will not uh, be able for them that they are going to buy any machines or any kind of expensive project product products they are only going to fill their tummies out of this next some economists also advised regarding the quasi universal basic rural income basic rural income means they are targeting here they are targeting the rural population and although uh, more uh, poor people are living in the rural areas but you see the numbers are rising with the urban poor 
because more and more people are coming in the urban areas and they are living a life uh, that is way worse than the rural areas they are living in the dense and uh, unhygienic conditions more and more troubles of disease and uh, the fluctuating employments and they are not having any stable conditions so all kinds of troubles are there so they will be excluded here and you are targeting only rural population that's a going that that's going to be a big problem and you see most of the issues these schemes these are cash transfer schemes so they are not going to address the core question that how to uh, provide them good quality public services if drinking water is not available the healthcare services if these are not available and if these are not of a standard of a quality then certainly this universal basic income funda would be a failure and that's why state should intervene and state state should take this responsibility here okay now see a uh, fundamental question remains of the basic public service and that is not affordable with the basic income so that's why we need an alternative solution okay we have discussed a lot and these things are apparent these things are clear we don't need better economist we need actually better management better political will better political capabilities and better administrative structure so the question again comes to the ethical issues corruption issues and the efficiency issues and the political will that needs to be uh taken care of and that's need to be improved otherwise no idea is going to sustain this universal basic income or basic capital that is never going to be successful if these things are not addressed so first we need to address them then we need a uh, strengthening of institutions that's an unavoidable solution if institutions are not strong then nothing can be done as a progress what is the difference between developed nations and india their institutions their autonomous institutions are very strong and that is always addressed by scholars and our institutions are always pressurized by politics and some administrative failures so to deliver the services we can take help of private sector but better management and better watch is needed okay now when inequality is rising and as long as people have bread why should they complain if the rich are eating more cake this question remains that uh, this is given an, as an argument that why these people would question about the rich class if they are eating their bread but you see when this inequality would persist then what is going to happen some people would become more and more rich okay they will become richer and they will manipulate the system again the way things are happening right now they will manipulate the system they will uh, getting bigger and bigger favors from the political class schemes would be favoring these people only so ultimately they will concentrate much more wealth and uh, this universal basic income idea would again be strangulated here and these people are only going to survive and these people will not be able to get any kind of services again because they will manipulate everything these rich class so that's the problem so these opportunities of progress would become unequal again that's the problem okay because they are only concentrated towards wealth and progress and their profit so ubi is going to fail that's the main idea of this article so they say that if we go by the private sector involvement as uh, a suggestion was given that as i told you rich class and the bigger enterprises they are always favored schemes political class and administrative structure it is favoring them so now they are an advantage but what about the bigger number of uh, these small enterprises who are giving employment to a huge population bigger number people they are employing so more problems are there with these small enterprises because all these schemes all these programs all these uh, uh, support of the system that is not with these uh, small enterprises that is with these big enterprises so we need to uh, aggregate these small enterprises that's a working idea if you suppose 100 small enterprises are there and one big enterprise is there so everything is working in the favor of big enterprise 
it's the same idea as we discussed the issue of <coughs> small land holding means a small field cannot give bigger production but a bigger field can give a commercial level bigger production so a bigger enterprise can give bigger production so we need to aggregate these small enterprises into one yeah, that's a example okay so we need to aggregate them so this aggregation is going to help so that's a uh, important solution here in this alternative approach we need to discuss the universal basic capital instead of basic income income is going to deplete after some time and again they would demand more income so that is not a working idea but capital is something that makes your earning permanent capital is something like that capital investment is always going to create assets and assets are going to give you uh, a consistent money okay so that's the issue with capital so we need to talk about the universal basic capital you see amul seva gramin these kind of uh, institutions corporates uh, cooperatives they have uh, given a nice example that they are giving a dividend to their stakeholders so when they are rising their profit is rising and when they are uh, working as a big enterprise so whatever dividend if they can pass to their stakeholders or the normal public who is going to be the stakeholder so certainly some proportion would, re would reach up to these small uh, these stakeholders or the normal public so these poor people would get a consistent dividend for a longer period of time because bigger enterprise will certainly gonna rise okay they will concentrate more wealth and their profit would rise so some dividend would always uh, reach up to these poor people so this can this can be a working idea so dividend for citizens that should be there instead of universal basic income there should be a universal basic dividend for the people we can uh, understand with this concept okay so that uh, that is a working idea so in this issue what we did we actually made the income permanent in this concept of UBI, universal basic income, the income is not going to be permanent and it is going to be unequal after some time. But here it is going to be equal and it would be much more interesting. These people would uh, rise because of the inequality factor because system is favoring them. Already they are uh, favored and these people are less favored, but they the some uh, uh, some uh, a permanent dividend would reach up to them. Then it is going to be a workable solution. Apart from that, some suggestions given by Second Administrative Reform Commission. These are the most practical ones. We should apply them and they can change the whole scenario. Second, the middle level institutions, as I told you, the aggregation of the small enterprises that is needed. Third, UBC, then UBI, as we discussed here. So that's the article all about and it's a very practical thing to discuss. Next article is... Uh, not much of importance it's important in the GS paper 4 and as an essay topic here we are celebrating not celebrating but uh, we are remembering 71st anniversary of Gandhi's death okay it's today is 31st of January in 1948 he was shot dead by Nathuram Godse and you see when we are uh, remembering somebody's death then we can discuss that what we should learn here and main thing with the Gandhi's death that it was not a death it was a self-sacrifice according to Mahatma Gandhi he upheld this notion whole his life that death should be interpreted very positively we should take it as a self-sacrifice and we can only convert it in a sense self-sacrifice when we are attaching a particular aim to this death this should solve some purpose and this should uh, this should uh, uh, give a positive outcome as he was always openly discussing about his death and it was surprising he wrote to his uh, niece that I may have to meet death in South Africa at the hands of my countrymen if that happens to you sorry if that happens you should rejoice it will unite the Hindus and Muslims. it means he was using his death as a tool as a positive tool to unite people and that was the aim so according to gandhi death is not the end death should be positive and it is actually a sacrifice and every person who is following the path of truth who is a satyagrahi he should be ready always to sacrifice his life for the cause 
so he is not being negative here he is being positive about the death because death is unavoidable that would come some day it would come so it should be a, a purposeful death okay and it should not be called as a death it should be a sacrifice and we should always be ready for the sacrifice so sacrifice is the main idea of this article nobody talked so openly about the death death as gandhi did and that's why he was a very practical person you see even bhagat singh accepted this thing in the end of his life that gandhi's way is much more practical and he said that uh, i am going to be dead and it did not solve much purpose all the many people are motivated many youth are uh, now thinking about getting india freed but this could not influence much as gandhi is influencing people because his idea is more working gandhi knew that these britishers are much more powerful they can tackle uh, india within one or two days they have machines they have gun machines they have uh, uh, all these royal navy royal air force everything they have they have nuclear power and all so it's not a workable solution if we are directly fighting with these people it's a kind of a foolishness and we are ultimately going to hurt all say ourselves only and that's why gandhi was a very smart person and that's why these uh, britishers they were much more scared of gandhi because they knew that we cannot do much about this person because he is going with the path of non violence and non violence is based on sacrifice so it's a bigger tool so that's why gandhi was great because he was a most practical person during the freedom struggle moment so he says that self sacrifice is going is going to make you great it is going to give you confidence it is going to give you energy and it is going to give you courage a lot of courage and all these things are required in the satyagraha path okay and it is going to be the ethical dying and it should be like a principled leave taking from life so your death should not be a simple death it should be a principled leave taking from life and it should solve purpose so it is all given in this article you can read this a lot of uh, instances are discussed here and uh, the way gandhi thought about this death and how we can become the soldier of truth he took a lot of inspiration from the socrates and socrates was uh, called satyavir by him and he taught him actually his uh, teachings taught him that we should become a soldier of truth and a life of uh, without experiment is not a life it's a waste and that's why gandhi did a lot of experiments he wrote the book my experiments with the truth very practical book he talked about everything uh, from his life uh, family marriage sex everything he talked about and he was so open and that was the greatness of gandhi and it was it was also a practical thing to discuss about death that it's not a danger it's a opportunity death should be should be taken as an opportunity and we should not waste this opportunity if we are committing any kind of suicide like thing it's a waste and it's a most coward act we should uh, see death as an opportunity so that's the thing and he defined a close link between the non violence and the art of dying so according to him the death was art of dying and it should be principled one purposeful one so it is all given in this article you can read these lines and uh, nothing else is there and the parallel that he established between the struggle of freedom and art of dying that was really magical and at, that was really excellent at, that was a genius idea okay it can give boost in struggling situations to you also you should not think about uh, dying uh, in us because it is not a freedom struggle that is going on but it is about making a sacrifice in your life so sacrifice is the core idea here okay he said do or die in uh, august uh, 1942 during the uh, quit india movement and he said so because he knew that no uh, other way is left here we need to show the purpose of our death and we should give thrills to these these britishers already we have done a lot but they are not understanding so whether this is the mantra free india or die in the attempt so we should attempt the main learning is that you should attempt and sacrifice okay so that's the thing now the tri's order when uh, the uh, telecom regulatory authority of india it is putting some uh, restrictions putting some guidelines for these uh, dts providers and they are saying that you cannot take money from the consumers on your wish they should choose what kind of channels they want to watch so now see consumer 
is empowered today because he has a lot of options you see uh, internet services are coming and it is said that all these DTS services are going to be replaced by these uh, internet services you see Netflix Amazon's these are uh, advertisement free subscription based channels and these are internet based and now the internet penetration is rising 5g 6g they would come and the speed is going towards gbps so nothing is going to be a problem here with the full hd buffering so these are great options for consumer today and in the uh, particular changing time you see they need to accept these uh, these guidelines they are resisting these guidelines but they should accept these guidelines these dth providers okay i'm talking about so you see still 20 crore people in India, they are using the DTS service and still 100, uh, sorry, 10 crore people, they are not using it. So there is enough scope available and time is also available because not all of these people are using the broadband services. That penetration is very less in India. But you see the time is changing, then they should adjust according to that. And consumer should also adjust and that should become smart here. And here consumer can win the situation by becoming aware about these situations okay so it will also help these companies in price price discovery understanding the consumer more if they are going to go with the choice of consumer so it is going to be helpful for these dts companies only okay and they can upgrade themselves into multiple uh, kind of uh, services you see much much of the content is available on youtube today and we have uh, explained the issue of uh, netflix and amazon prime and all so these are global over the top providers like netflix and all they are changing the landscape so if they are not going to adjust and, and if they are uh, going to uh, keep resisting the guidelines then certainly they only will be in problem because much option is available so it should be a welcome and we should welcome this new era also where consumer is upheld consumer is winning so that's a nice information nice news for us and you see the main learning from the exam point of view is that time is changing fast. We should adjust and we should not resist the change, technological change. Because when these DTS services came, they were, they were also a big change. They were also a technological advancement. And now when internet service is going to be the next advancement, then certainly we should welcome it. So that's the thing. Next, the prelims facts, two member of statistical panel quit. You see national statistical commission is there and in this commission right now three posts are vacant the chairperson post is also vacant mr pc monan is given the charge here and his this person pc monan and one member gv minakshi they are resigning it's a worrisome thing many people from the public employment they are resigning they are saying that we are being ignored our statistical commission is of no value because it is its recommendation has totally ignored so what is the use and uh, this institution is not working so we are going to resign here so only uh, mr Abin abhinitab kant who is said favorite uh, for the government he is only left here as an ex-official member uh, because he is the cta ceo of niti io okay and mr parvin srivastav he these two people are going to be there in this nsc now so our institutions are in peril this was started way back in 2005 where uh, they were about to help the ministry of uh, uh, statistics and program implementation in the data collection because huge data is needed in everything in policy making in all execution and everything or any kind of monitoring then in data collection this commission was helping a lot and it was working very very fine it was uh, uh, assess uh, assisting these nsso data and uh, these cpi numbers and all but now these troubles are erupting and they are saying mr um, these uh, important members they are alleging that some ignorance is going on so that's the trouble now some map question for you people also find out all the protected areas and rivers in the state of assam and the tributaries of brahmaputra you should look into the map now the news is regarding the golden langur langur who is also called geese golden langur one of the old world monkey okay and golden leaf monkey it's all also called and you see population is very less and uh, they are only present in the northwestern part of Assam between the river uh, Manas and the river Sankosh. They both are coming from the Bhutan uh, country. Okay. And in Bhutan, there is black mountain ranges. There also these are present. Otherwise, they're only present in the northwestern part of Assam. 
नो वेयर दे आर फाउंड ओके सो गोल्डन लंगूर यू विल बी फाइंडिंग देर नेम इन द लिस्ट ऑफ प्रोटेक्टेड एनिमल्स अंडर वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट इन शेड्यूल वन अंडर एक्ट सेवेंटी टू ओके शेड्यूल वन इन द साइट्स अपेंडिक्स वन दे आर ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट दे आर ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट इन द आई सी इन कैटेगरी इज एंडेंजर्ड लिस्ट सो इट इज एंडेंजर्ड नाउ ओके सो दैट्स अ प्रॉब्लम विद द इशू एंड इट इज द इशू ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड आर अफर्ट्स towards conservation so that's the thing uh, as uh, mr union minister yesterday said that in our new india we are going to protect the biodiversity it is the right for these uh, species to live so that's the thing and you see uh, as i told you found these uh, borders and all these uh, cities and protected areas here and the specific animals which are found you see in the kaziranga one horned rhinoceros is there and in this orang that is present on the north bank of this uh, brahmaputra so these are very specific national parks and uh, protected areas okay next these are mcqs try them put their answers in the comment section and the mains based question i am giving to you here uh, this is uh, some clue you take from the gandhi's life and you write about this issue very important issue and this is all about today and uh, this is the group where i upload these pdfs daily and uh, you can download these here send me a request i would approve and this is the link to my facebook page thanks a lot keep watching it was amit saining